All right, guys, in this one, we have a 2015 Chevrolet Cruze, and the issue is, is that it's an intermittent no start. And as you can tell right now, the vehicle started. No check engine light or anything on to the vehicle. Um, for this one right here, I'm gonna be trying out a new little tool. It's the GoDiag GD201. Uh, it's basically a full system diagnostic uh, scanner. So uh, apparently, you should be able to program keys and everything with this. That we'll have to wait and see. But uh, for right now, what we're going to be doing is just using it to try to diagnose this vehicle. So um, what I'm going to do right now, because what I did, give me a minute, go all the way back up, is I'm just going to save all this by pressing the F1 button, because there's a lot of codes in the system, uh, in the systems, I should say. Uh, we'll go back. As you can see, engine has one fault code, which is just an immobilizer code. Uh, body control module has 24 codes. Electronic brake has two. HVAC has uh, two, uh, airbag has one, uh, airbag has four, uh, instrument cluster has one. Let's go see what the instrument cluster says. Um, the engine code is for an immobilizer system. The, there's a lot of codes into the uh, body control module. I'm going to print them out to go over them. Because as you can tell, the screen is uh, is a little small compared to what I'm used to, but uh, so far it's been doing pretty good. So control module, uh, power circuit, low voltage. I'm getting a lot of modules that are having a low voltage code, and I'll give you guys a little a bit of uh, history onto this one. Um, I checked this car out about three weeks ago, but there was just a few codes into the system and there was no symptoms. So I basically just shipped the car. I didn't charge the client. I didn't do anything uh, to try like take money from them. Um, basically, I just scanned the code and I shipped it. Now, um, another garage got the vehicle, um, called the dealer, and the dealer said, change the battery. Start with the battery but it was an intermittent no-start issue. So for me personally, I told the client that changing the battery will probably not fix their issue. And as I, as I thought, it did not fix the issue. So what ended up happening after that is that I got the call from the client, vehicle wasn't starting uh, again. Client goes, uh, waited a day or two because I was uh, busy at school with the uh, classes and everything. So it's Saturday right now. So I have time to actually come onto the car, but guess what, the car starts. So, not very uh, helpful uh, onto that. So what we're gonna be doing is basically trying to chase down what these codes could be. Uh, I'm gonna be checking through the system, see if there's any TSBs or bulletins or anything out in order to try and verify what could possibly be, be the issue. So we have the body control module, the engine control module, the body control module, and I think also the cluster had some codes into it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go down, let's go see. Yeah, instrument cluster has one. And all, you need basically like all those three, if I'm not mistaken, on GMs in order to be able to start your vehicle. So if I'm not mistaken, the instrument cluster also had like a communication or a voltage code into it. So like I said, I gotta try to figure out why all these modules are having voltage codes. And that's what I think is happening because from what I understand, the client said that every now and then, the cluster will light up and then it won't light up, it will light up, it won't light up, it will light up, it won't light up. The radio starts flashing, there's a bunch of uh, things that uh, are going on. So let's go back into here. Diagnostic trouble codes, display. Control module, power circuit, low voltage. So I think we're having a low voltage issue onto the car, but now where could that low voltage issue be coming from? That's my, my question. So what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm gonna take this guy I'm gonna plug them up to the computer and I'm gonna print out my findings or my DTCs to see uh, which modules are giving me voltage codes because I'm pretty sure that we're having an issue with a, volt, uh, with a voltage issue either leading up to the PCM or going throughout the whole car. All right, just printed everything else. Uh, I'll show you guys how this guy works real quick. Um, where do I wanna go? Let's exit that. So basically you have to take and hook your, uh, your scanner up to your, your computer, then you come over and you would have to download the GoDiag program. I'll make a full video onto this for people who wanna get to know this tool a little bit better. Um, you download the GoDiag program, you open it, you have to log in and uh, sign in. Uh, make sure that everything is up to date by going in here, you can register your product. Uh, you can uh, access my profile, which is your address and everything. 
uh, support tickets. So this is if you are having issues with the, the tool, you send it to the engineering department and they will fix it as soon as possible. Software management, all right. So it gives you all the software that you can uh, download and use, which kind of uh, goes with what the client was saying. Uh, instrument cluster, control module, power circuit, telematics, no DTCs, steering column, no DTCs, front seat airbag, uh, heating, 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 no DTCs, no DTCs. Then we have lost communication with brake control module, engine control module, which is the power steering that's giving those codes. Lost communication with body control module. And lost communication with uh, the radio saying I can't see the body control module. And saying the control module power, power low uh, current circuit. So, we're having quite a few codes indicating that we're having communication issues with like the PCM and the body control module. I'm going to go through the power circuit real quick before I say anything and then I'll bring you guys right back. Alright, so let's do a little bit of uh, deductions here. Um, we're having lost communication with multiple modules. Um, the telematics had none, the steering co column lock control module had none, front seat heating had none, left side, parking assist, zero. Uh, engine control, control module we lost communication with. Um, after that there was also a, which other ones? We lost communication with the BCM. We lost communication with the BCM from the radio and from the, um, the passenger presence module. Uh, after that, we lost communication with the engine control module, which the power steering control module was giving that one. The electronic brake control module lost power or lost uh, communication, sorry. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, transmission, none. So there's just a lot of modules that were lose that had lost power from what I can tell. So what can make a module uh, not lose its power? Lost communication. Um, what can make a module lose communication? One, communication lines. But if it was on the high speed bus and we lost uh, and there was a module shorting out, it would affect all those modules onto that bus. Um, so I'm thinking more around a power issue. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I lost communication with the body control module and the engine control module and the SRS control module. And the only thing that's common with those is the power leading to it. Um, you have the communication line also, but uh, I got a communication section right here, actually. I printed it out. And on that, the telematics is on the high speed. Uh, the electronic brake is on the high speed. The power steering control module is on the high speed. Glow plugs we don't have. Uh, automatic transmission assembly is on the high speed. Engine control module is on the high speed. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What else do we have? Is that what it is? Of, okay, no, that's something else. All right. Uh, after that, steering wheel angle sensors on the high speed. We have the body control module, keyless entry, and these did not have any uh, communication codes. So I would not go towards those uh, modules really. That would me personally. Um, and each of them have their own specific grounds. So I highly doubt that all the grounds let go at the same time. After that, we could only have really power. So that's what I'm thinking is happening with this one. I think that we're having a power issue onto this vehicle. Yeah, because you see like the, where is it? Uh, right here. B101E43 is circuit fuse B plus, short to ground, open or high resistance onto the fuse B plus circuit. So uh, I believe that we're having a voltage issue onto this car, which is affecting the starting of the vehicle but I can't get it to recreate the issue. So it's kind of hard for me to say that definitively because I, I don't just feel like throwing in a, a part at this car. So I'm trying to think on what I can uh, do to try to recreate it. So give me a few minutes and I'll try to see something or I'll poke around a little bit more and see if I can find something. All right, so did a little bit of poking around, uh, started to go through the systems uh, to see which ones would be connected with the power of the underhood fuse box compared to the power 
when the ignition key is on and vice versa. And conclusion is, is that there's a lot of these models that get their main power from the fuse box under the hood. Some get them from the fuse box that the underhood fuse box feeds that's inside the vehicle. Some get it from the ignition switch. So it's really like all over the place. But there is like this code right here where it doesn't say anything, but this is for the sunroof module. Okay, now the sunroof module lost communication onto the onto the, the line. Now there's a one power that is right here. And then we have a ground that's down here. And then after that we have our serial data. Now I don't think that there would be an issue with the sunroof uh, module unless we wouldn't have uh, power and ground. But like I said, everything is working right now, so it's very hard for me to determine what could be the issue. I'm going towards a power issue, me personally, but like I said, I can't really say that there's a power issue unless I can get this car not to work properly. So you open up the door, everything turns on, locks are working properly. Locks aren't working, are they? Oh yes. All right. Oh, that doesn't sound too good. Oh, oh, my lights are flashing. You guys see that? Oh, look at that. Oh, I think it just started. That's perfect. So right now the system is not working. Oh, that's great. All right, so as you can tell, right now, there's nothing going on inside the vehicle. The check engine light is on. I have the ignition switch all the way to up to the max. Um, and there's like no power going coming in. So that is great for me anyway, customer two. Um, let's take and try and unlock this door. Okay, I unlock the door. Let's open the door. Hopefully everything keeps like that. All right, let's come to the back for a minute. Let's come check. The four ways turned on, which they should not have. I didn't touch anything for the four ways. Lights are flashing. Oh, I love it when things mess up. Makes it my job so much easier. All right. So now that all that's messed up, we have our dash that's not turning on, our cluster is not turning on. Um, more than likely, we're going to have a power issue, like I was saying, because it's affecting the whole vehicle. But let's come in here. Let's come see a few fuses, and we'll see what's going on, okay? All right, so this is a very, very uh, bad, if you <laughs> want to call it that. Um, this battery is extremely, extremely hot. So the ground side's not. Uh, the power side, I mean, is really, really cold, but like there's an extreme amount of heat onto this. Like I can like pull it out, that's how much uh, like. So what could be causing that? Let's turn off that for a minute. So there's an extreme amount. Oh, everything just turned on when I, when I touched that. Okay, let's turn this off, and look, ah, now everything's working the way it's supposed to, yeah, at least I caught that, I'm thinking we might be having a ground issue. My lights were flashing. Let's close this door again. I gotta try. I don't know what happened there. I didn't touch anything. And now all the locks are working properly. That ground wire got extremely, extremely hot. The four ways went on, the wipers went on. So. Now the car will start. Oh, no it will not. There we go. So that's okay. Well, okay, it's okay for me. Uh, well, kind of a power issue. See, as soon as I touched it, everything went and started working again. 
But this guy, like the sheath, look, look at that. I'm pulling the sheath right off. Let's try this again. I don't know if I have a, I'm gonna try something else too. I wanna see this. Open it, yeah, see? Okay, I'm gonna give something a try. I don't know if it's gonna work. Let's add a ground to the battery and see what happens, okay? Oh, booster cables come in handy for more than uh, what people think. Ah. I'm hooked up to the ground. Let's just ground this guy out. Uh, yeah, we're having a ground issue with this guy. You see what just happened there? As soon as I touched this to ground, everything was fine. So I think that we're having a ground issue with our with our wiring. I think that's the only issue with this car. Let's check this again. Yeah, I'm positive of it. All right. So you see, now I'm gonna come back over. And all I'm gonna do is touch the ground surface with the All right, so there's a ground issue with the battery. I'm not gonna go any further than that. All right, is this gonna work? Yeah. So that would explain it. So either power or ground, I said, right? I was leaning more towards power, but it seems to be more of a ground issue. So, uh, and yeah, this guy's hot. Okay, even the battery was getting hot. So um, I'm gonna suggest that they change the ground cable. Uh, that's for sure. More than likely we have a bad connection on the inside. Yeah, it's for sure we have a bad connection on the inside. That would make sense. So I'm pretty sure that that's what our issue is on this one. And actually just to prove to everybody that this is a bad ground, um, I wish I had my little clamps here, but I don't. So what I'm gonna do is just stick this guy onto here as best as I can. Oh, oh no, I think I just stopped. I think I just got it to work properly. So I don't think it's gonna work anymore. Uh, let's see, give me a minute. Uh oh, let's see. No, we're good. All right, let's. All right, let's see if I can do this with one hand real quick. No, I don't think it's touching. I need this guy to touch the ground. And it's not. All right, bring you guys back. Let's put my little light bulb in here. Now, just remember, a ground to ground uh, voltage drop, if everything is good, you can even do this with a test light. It's just more visual than uh, using numbers. But um, if you have a bad ground, what will end up happening is that if you do a ground to ground voltage drop test with a test light, that light bulb will light. All right? So. So let's see if I can get this for everybody. I don't know if you guys see my little light bulb lighting. I'm hoping you guys are seeing that. All right. So that's indicative of a bad ground. So this car needs a ground wire. I'm not going any farther than that. We're going to put one into this car to fix this client's issue. That This issue has been going on for... Last time I checked it, I think was what, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe about two, three weeks ago, they put a battery into it and then it started messing up again. So, oh yeah, that is, that is very, very hot. Okay. So this is what this car is going to get. Now just remember what I said, guys, if the issue is there, you're able to find it. If the issue is not there, it's very, very, very hard to find out what's going on. But as, 
as long as you're able to find it, the client will be happy, everybody will be happy. But like I said, this one is gonna need a, um, a ground wire. This one's actually not that hot. This one though is ridiculous how hot it is. So inside of here, there's an issue. And just by the sheathing, like pulling back, um, oh, geez, that is um, not good. I wish I could give you guys a temperature reading of this. I don't even have my, uh, let's just say that you can't hold it, okay? So, uh, like I said, hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.